to equal a billion dollars. Huh? Let's get it. But y'all would rather argue and be broke. All right, let's uh, line four. I just, you're on the air. Talk to me. Uh, God bless you richly. Uh, the economic uh, and uh, co-op on somehow and what that Asbury? Yeah, yeah, Asbury Park. That's right. Right on the corner. Right on the corner. You can't miss it. Right. You know, you're here to remind me of Metro Foodland, man. Mm. Just ain't, a, ain't no limit. Ain't no limit, brother. That's what you call economic empowerment. Right. That's how you build, that's how you build a community. Because we don't have a community now. All we have is hotel uh, check-in, check-out. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, this, uh, 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 other folks coming in from the suburbs, you realize, I mean, I've been, I've been looking at it for years. Uh, the freeway starts building up to 6 o'clock and go to 10, and then it start, they start going back out to the suburbs from downtown, the financial district, to, uh, the fire, the police, the city hall at, at about 2 o'clock. So, I mean, how do they get eight hours work done inside of four hours? It, it beats me. And they make more money than the folks in Detroit. They make twice as much money as we do living in Detroit, working in our city, they pay no taxes. Uh, uh, you know, I'm looking at the Michigan Chronicle this week. Mm-hmm. Right on the front page, Wayne County Land Bank. Action before option. This is uh, this is the biggest ripoff in one of the it's the biggest ripoff in this city right now. Land bank because they taking uh, a working hard working black folks home property. Uh, you, you realize there's been about fifty uh, percent of foreclosures in the city of Detroit and evictions. Uh, the only way a lot of people go downtown is to go to court, uh, foreclosure, eviction, jail, or to the morgue. Mm. You, know, you heard of genocide? Yeah. Uh, economic genocide? A uh, 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 political apartheid? A uh, uh, murder? A uh, social suicide? Educational murder? Uh, and this, this black and white thing, man, look, racism is going to kill the trailer trash and crackers. You know, uh, uh, I can't believe it. You talking about the bad giver? We had we had folks in this country, man. Even even in Detroit, Detroit is the richest city in the state of Michigan. Mm. Folks remember that. That's why they bankrupted. That's why they're taking over. Everybody all over the world talking about Detroit. Right. Uh, we had a uh, Barry Gordy, a uh, Don Barton. Uh, he had he got a development over on the west, he, what is it, the east side? Uh, Michael uh, Jackson, mm-hmm. uh, Matty Dobson, mm-hmm. Chris Webb, uh, Bishop Bonner, Wash. It, 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 they cut us off at the knees, man. Anytime we pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps, you're being cut off at the ankles. Uh, for 400 years, this thing going on. Yeah, man, and 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 and, and we got to figure out what our response is going going to be, brother. Thank you for calling. I, I got. To, I want to get some others in here. Um, I want to get some others in here. Line two, Reggie Walton. Hey, Red, how you doing, man? I'm good. How are you? All right, all right, all right. Are you right on target uh, today too? Hey, man, I just wanted to get a couple comments in. Uh, I'm a dark, black-skinned male. I'm 65 years old, and I work in, I live in Detroit, but I work in uh, Farmington Hills. Mm-hmm. And I see it every day. Uh, I've been doing this the last two years. I'm very dark-skinned, and I've got a, a, big, a big, large afro. I mean, one of that damn wall, but it's up there. All right. And I know there's white folks who don't even want to look at me, especially white women. Mm-hmm. And I heard comments when I walked by at a mall. 
uh, like uh, Lakeside Mall. He looked like an ape. He looked like a gorilla. Mm-hmm. And I look at the I look at the faces. They show white ones. They, they they look like they fear. They look like they're scared to death. So what I do, okay, if they want to be like that, I make. And I talk to other black folks too. But they experience the same thing. I make white people look at my black face. I'm proud. I'm proud of it. Get your kidding, brother. And another thing, um, the Detroit police just had a uh, academy class graduate this month in early March, and most of them was all white boys. It was a couple of a couple of black new uh, black new uh, ones that just graduated, and, and and most of them, and same with the fire, they all lived in the suburb. They didn't dime that tax. They pay no taxes here, but they want to get all the earnings here. Don't spend no money here. And I'll see you maybe you can comment and they, they stand on what I said with my other comment too. If uh, Detroit is eighty five percent black and the fire department and police and all the other departments should be at least eighty five percent black. Thank you got to keep up the good work now here. Hey Rich, thanks for calling me. I appreciate the call, man. Uh so much, so much. Let's go to line six one, you're on the air talk to me. Hey man. Yeah, yeah, try it down. That's what we gotta do. We gotta, um, I'm willing to volunteer for whatever, man. We need canvassers. We need to canvass this city ourselves. We need to see what's going on with the properties. Our wealth is in the property. Yeah. There was a frame house sold over here in my area for $153,000. Where are those people going? You know what I'm saying? We need to know that. I'm like, Rick. Now, just think about that. Now, just 10 properties like that, that's $1.5 million. Yes. I'm, I'm with y'all. Yeah, man. We got to organize this thing and get this data. Obama did a hell of a thing. He put a phone in everybody's hands. That's when people started getting educated because they turned into access to the Internet. So we're really catching up to speed on these crooks that are running this same crooked system, and they look so silly. As we organize. They will come down. It's as simple as that. The people that are latched to them, they'll crumble. They want to come in with suits and all of that just to get a little. That's what they are, vultures. Look at their lifestyles. You understand what I'm saying? You cannot let things like that affect you. You have to keep moving forward, right. all of us. Right. Because whatever happens, right. you understand what I'm saying? What's an honorable death? At the ATM, we're fighting for yours and your people. They're robbing us blind. Jeffrey Fighter got on here and said, Detroit is the last city to be colonized. Look up colonized. Look up colonization. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Go back and look at that bankruptcy trial. I'm trying to tell y'all. It spells out a lot of the crooks and a lot of the crookedness. You understand what I'm saying? Well, we need to do our own auditing. Where's the city auditor? You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They draw the amount every month when Kwame was in there. They ain't two, three of them. You see what I'm saying? Why did everything go dormant all of a sudden? Now people have the information in hand we have to execute. If people get in your way, you have a bigger risk going to your local store anyway. So you might as well advance forward for your interest. We got to see what's going on with this deal with the train station. We got to see what's going on. Okay, you're about to buy the state fairgrounds. What about Bell Island? Are you negotiating Bell Island in there? Right. Back in here? Right. You understand what I'm saying? Right. We need some questions, man. You can't be grinning with these fake teeth and all this. That, that, that don't work no more. That don't work no more. We need to see hardcore numbers. Because it's a $10 billion hovering over the city, inner city of Detroit, if you really do the math. Where are, who's harnessing these dollars? Where are our city auditors? Where are our city attorneys? Because when ours come out, you're not going to like it. You understand what I'm saying? That's what it's time for. And one more thing. This is a store. I talked to an owner of the store. I'm not going to say what they say. It's on desk. I got me slice the pieces. He said, what are you For a dollar, he said he'd sell a total of 80 to 90 pizzas, which have chest slices in them. You do the math. Real low key, real under the radar, not a lot of noise, in a poverty struck in here. Right. Uh, thank you. Just, just do the math, y'all. You got it. Thank you. Hey, thanks, man. Uh, let's go to line one, Reverend White. Hey, good morning, Dr. Bullock. Good morning. Absolutely right. I, I love what you're saying and doing. I've been listening for a few weeks now. 
I used to live in Detroit of course but now I'm in uh, Miami. But I, I was just calling because you're absolutely right and you know whoever controls the land controls the economy and controls the environment and um, I think everybody needs to six, seven, eight miles, you need to go to the store on seven mile man. What is it, Dr. Asbury Park? Yep, seven mile of Asbury Park. One six four hundred sixteen four hundred. West seven miles. Get your soda, pay your battery, and your doctor. Well, I want everybody to hook up with Dr. Perkins over there. That he got a, um, a credit union. That's the start right there. Put all the money in there. And everybody do with their resources. Every church, every person, everybody to the community. And I, the last time I called, I talked about the community consists of a hospital, a bank, a school, and a grocery store. You got those things that you got in the community. And Dr. Bullock has started with the store. That's everybody get on board put this money together and you know we build a hospital, build a school and uh build a bank. Or we can use Dr. Spurgeon. He already got a credit union. That's yeah, yeah, we, but we can't use his credit union. I talked to him about that some years ago. It's 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 a uh it's, his credit union is one of them small ones that just for like members of churches in in the bylaws of his credit union wouldn't make it a good vehicle for economic development. He would have to change some things. But the idea of having one is a great yes, idea. It's, yeah. It's one it's another one on is it in Dr. Bullock on seven dollar living on a black home bank. Well yeah you got first independence. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, you got Urban Partnership Bank. Mm-hmm. Um we got enough churches we got enough churches to start a, a million dollars and one of those and start this process that you're talking about, pooling the resources, building our economic, building our community, because that's another thing. Your economy actually control the politics. You don't, you don't need the politician. The politician needs you. Come on, man. Look, the Council of Baptist Pastors should go meet with the Wayne County Land Bank tomorrow. Instead of doing all that preaching, they should go meet with right. Eric Sabri and say, we want a thousand parcels. Uh, and we got nonprofit status. So we're not paying no taxes, and we don't want no stormwater runoff be on none of the vacant land. They go to area of the city that we want, and then after they go to Wayne County, they should go to state land bank, say the same thing. They should go to city land bank, say the same thing. And then the pastors, council, after they get the land control, should raise the money, rehab, purchase, and then put, put people in homes and generate revenue, put that money into a fund. That's what they should do. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. But they're not going to do it. Thank you, Reverend White. Thank you. They're not. They're going to be sweating and wearing gators and going to the convention. Uh, I, was, I was mad. Somebody sent me a beautiful letter about James and Tom. See, Reverend, this just shows the time. Remember what James says. And, uh, I say, I do remember what James said about the tongue. It's a good thing that the Bible has a different book. And I don't follow James. Let's go to the line. Nine, three, maybe. No, man. Hi, how are you today? I'm great, how are you doing? Uh, I have a couple of comments about the, uh, the development aspect. Uh, to answer your question about how many uh, black people, minorities, does it take to counter one rich white guy, uh, my guess is probably about half a million because uh, that one white guy has uh, access to uh, uh, the, powers, uh, the powers that be, uh, what uh, P.J. O'Rourke uh, called a parliament of whores, regardless of what level it's at, they sell themselves to the 